there everybody it's Kathy and you're back with me here on my YouTube channel Kathy's Random Acts of Stamping. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to tune in today. You are always welcome here. If you have not subscribed to my channel please uh, take a moment and click on that subscribe button and if you hit that little bell right beside subscribe that will allow you to set up how you want to receive notifications so that way you won't miss anything that's happening here at Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. As many of you know, I am an independent Stamping Up demonstrator located here in North Carolina, and I am in the U.S., which means I can take care of you as long as you are in the United States of America. So if you're not currently working with a demonstrator, I would absolutely love the opportunity to earn your business, to be your mentor, your coach, and help you with all of your stamping needs. So today, we are going to work on this really cute little magic card and if you have been around uh, card making for any length of time I'm sure you've seen these these cards can be a bit intimidating but I'm hoping today that I can break this down and uh, make it very easy so that anybody can make this the reason they call this a magic card is because when you pull this out it magically changes color how neat is that now that one was my first one that I made and as you can see my little piece didn't match up really well so this was just a prototype that I did then I did a second one this one works much much better and when you pull it out as you can see our little Easter friends um, change color in a beautiful dramatic way is that not the cutest card ever and uh, these are so much fun to make your your grandchildren your children uh, any nieces nephews grandchildren whatever will enjoy getting a card like that okay in order to make this you will need a few products so I have I have gathered up a few items and these are just some of the tools and things you're going to need. You're going to need some liquid glue. You're going to need some tear and tape or any two-sided tape. And I'm just going to go ahead and take this out. I couldn't find my little roll. I know it's here somewhere, but uh, I did have an extra roll, so I'm pulling that out. And Stamping Up does carry this two-sided tape. We call ours a tear and tape adhesive and it works absolutely fantastic. You're going to need a couple of ink pads. You're going to need Memento Tuxedo Black. You're also going to need your um, stays on Jet Black. And the reason you're going to need two different inks is we're going to do alcohol ink coloring on this one. And to make our magic card happen, we're going to be stamping with stays on on an um, an acetate sheet which is our window sheets so those are what you're going to need for that you're also going to need a stamp positioning tool so if you have the um, the stamp apparatus which is uh, stamping ups uh, some of us have different stamping platforms but those will work as well I'm going to move my tools out of my way just for a minute move my inks over here you're also going to need the stays on um, uh, ink cleaner or the stays on cleaner. The reason you're going to need this is because stays on is a um, solvent ink. So you're going to have to have a special cleaner in order to clean that. You're also going to need your regular stamp cleaner or your um, chamois. And I'm using my chamois today. So those are some of the things that you're going to need to start off with. You're also going to need whatever coloring tools you're going to use, whether it be your uh, Stampin' Blends, your colored pencils, and I had some colored pencils out earlier that I was working with, but I think I'm going to, I'm going to go with my Stampin' Blends on this one. And I decided that I am going to use using using that, but we're going to need to do it on our stamp apparatus. So I'm not going to position it yet. I thought I was going to use these, but I'm not. I'm just going to use that large one. And yes, I did cut mine apart because they're easier to deal with when they're cut apart like this. Um, especially if I'm doing individual product pro, um, projects like this one, you're going to definitely want that cut apart. Now. To get started, I'm going to move all this out because we're going, to need to, we're going to need to bring in a piece of designer series paper. And this is this is out of the Playful Patterns. And I am going to cut this down. I spilt some solvent on it. 
but I can still get my five and a half inch piece out and get that cut off. So I'm just going to cut this at five and a half. So you're going to need a piece that's five and a half by 12. And this is what our piece is going to look like. Let me make sure I got all of that solvent off of that. And I did. So once you do that, let's not take our trimmer away just yet. Turn this onto your 12 inch piece and cut on one, in one side don't worry about get, uh, trying to write down all these measurements. Everything will be in the description below. And I'll also put a project sheet out on the Facebook group where you can download that, print it out, and have all of this to, to look at when you get ready to do yours. I want to cut just an eighth of an inch off of one end of this um, cardstock. So I'm going to choose this end right here. And that is just an eighth of an inch. You can see it's just a tiny little uh, sliver. So now we're ready to score. So I'm going to bring in our Simply Scored scoreboard. And the reason I'm doing this is just to make it a little simpler. Um, for anyone that doesn't have the trimmer that we use, um, this is going to help you see exactly where to score this. The scoring is very simple on this piece. You're going to score in two places. That's the four inch side or four inch line and eight inches just like that and then I'm going to go ahead and fold my lines or my score marks and this is going to fold under like that and this is going to come back over it like that this is going to be your front, and this is going to be your bottom. So I am going to write on the inside of here in pencil. I'm just going to put a B right here, just to remind me that that's my bottom. All right, now that we've got this creased and everything, if you remember that we made a little B right here to show this is the bottom, the reason that's the bottom is because this is going to fold in and that's going to fold to the bottom. This is the bottom of your card. This is going to be the front of your card. So we're going to need to do a little bit of fancy footwork right on this piece here. And what I like to do is fold everything together so that I can see just what I'm working with here. So let me show you our next step. The one other thing that I didn't think about telling you that we needed was our rectangular stitch dies. Now you can use anything that will work for an opening. If you wanted to do a circle opening, you can do whatever opening that you want. I'm going to use the rectangles because I think this gives us more bang for the buck. When I say bang for the buck, you want as much space here. Now this one's larger than the one I did before. I think I'm going to go down a size because I want to have some border around it. Let's see, I think this may have been the one I used before. Just like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this down, but I want to make sure I've got it nice and straight. So I'm going to use my grid mat to line it up, and I want to come down about there and about there. That looks pretty good because I'm using my grid lines to line up on the sides and the bottom. And I'm going to hold that in place and I'm going to grab one of my little post-it flags and I've got some up here. I'm going to grab a new one and I'm going to put that down right there. I might even grab one more wouldn't hurt to do this on all four corners just to make sure it doesn't shimmy or lose space. Now you do not want to run it through like this. You want to open up your card like that and you're going to run it through with it open because you don't want to cut windows in the top and the bottom, just in the center portion. The only reason that I folded it like this to cut or to put this down is it allowed me to see the outer edges a lot better. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, I'm going to bring over my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Let me zoom y'all out just a little bit so that you can see the entire machine. And I'm going to grab my plates. So I'm going to need my number one plate my number two die adapter plate, 
a cut plate, which is a number three, and I also need another number three that's going to be my top cover plate. And I'm going to put this in, and I'm going to angle it just ever so slightly. I can't do a good angle on that because we're dealing with a long piece of cardstock, but I am going to try to angle it just slightly. And I'm going to only go, oops, you know what, I'm going to have to do this straight on. Because if not, I'm going to bend my paper. And I don't want to bend my paper. Yeah, I don't like to go straight in like that unless I absolutely have to. It's hard on your dies and your machine. Normally when I'm cutting a piece, I will angle it so I don't get that hard pop. But sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes in a case like this, you pretty much have to um, let the machine do what it needs to do. And in this case, it was making that terrible pop sound because we were going in on a straight edge. It is harder to push it through when you do that. But I don't do that very often. Normally, if I was cutting a small piece, I would have put this in at an angle and it would have been much better. I'm going to save that piece because I can use that for another card. And now that we've got our opening cut out of here, we are going to go ahead and cut our next piece of cardstock, which is going to be a piece of white. So once I get this uh, window cut out, I like to come back over with a bone folder and just really iron everything nice and flat. Because it went through the die cut machine, it can get a little wonky on you. So, you know, give it a good press. And I'm gonna press those fold lines very, very tightly. This will help it to lay nice and flat like that. Isn't that pr paper pretty on the inside? You know, if you wanted to and you wanted color, you could very easily turn it over and do it like that. But I want it to stay in that white, that black and white, and you're going to see why. So we're going to turn it back over, press it back in this direction, and that's going to be that. All right, I'm going to move these out of the way, and we're going to get our trimmer back over. And we are going to take our piece of white cardstock. Let me grab a piece. I had a piece, but I kind of messed up and I spilled something on it. So we'll start out with a new piece. Now this piece needs to be cut at, let me grab my notes. Move my Diet Coke before I knock that over on something because I have been bad this morning about knocking stuff over. Do y'all ever have days like that? <laughs> okay. I've got my notes over here, so now we are going to, so we're going to cut a piece out of white cardstock that is four and one fourth. By five and one fourth. And then on the five and one fourth inch side is where we need to score, not the four and one quarter. So on the five and one fourth inch side, which is this side right here, you're gonna put the, the short end up and you're gonna score down that long side. And it's still at three eighths. One, two, three. Right at three eighths. Bringing my score blade down and score. And now we can move that back out of our way. We're going to crease that over, burnish it down really well. And
Okay, so we're going to adhere this on the piece that we marked as the bottom. Right there's my B. But we're going to put this up to this side of our window. Just like that. And you want to bring it all the way to your left as far as you can. Because now when you fold this over... I'm sorry. Let's see. This way. Make sure I'm doing it right. This is, can be the tricky part of this. I got something on my white card stock. Okay. It is going to adhere to the bottom of your top piece. So right in this crease line. So turn it so that your bottom is to your right. And this piece is right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to lay that down, bringing this white piece as far down so it matches up right even with the bottom here. And you're going to put your tape right there. And then you're going to fold this over and adhere it. So this piece will adhere to that. Just like that. So let's go ahead and get our tape on there. So open that up if it makes it easier for you to put your tape on. Making sure your tape, just like we did before, make sure your tape is in between the score line and the cut line. Just like that, and cut it off. And we're going to burnish this down again and lift off. Just like that, and make sure you fold that back, lay it in with this pointing up, lay it over top of your um, your opening where you cut your window. Make sure it's laying on top of that with your sticky side to the left and where you mark the bottom. Let me zoom you out just a bit. Right here is where is where I mark the B for the bottom. This is your top panel. So make sure you're right up on the score line, but not over it. You want to make sure that that's going to go up in there, down to the bottom, and all the way over, and then just press that down. Just like that. Now this is adhered just where it needs to be. So now when you fold this over, this is going to be your back bottom, right there where your B's at. And we are coming along now with our card. The next thing that we need to do is we need to cut um, a piece of, uh, let me get my notes. We need to cut a piece of white cardstock. Um, let's see if that piece that I put down here will work. This piece needs to be five and a quarter. And it's going to be a little bit too short. That's okay. We'll just grab another piece of cardstock. And now this piece needs to measure three and a half by five and one fourth. So I'm going to put this in at three and one half. Just like that. And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut it at five and one fourth. and one-fourth. All right. I'm going to put my white scraps out of my way. Now you're also going to need a window sheet that's cut that same size. And a window sheet is nothing more than a piece of acetate. And I already have a piece cut. Let's make sure it's the right size. Nope, not quite. We're going to have to get another piece because this is not the size I need. So I'm just going to grab another window sheet. And our window sheets come in 12 by 12 packs like this. 
and I always put my pieces back in here that I that I didn't use like that I had cut a piece off of and let's see this piece is gonna work so we can cut this piece down so let me grab my trimmer one more time and we need this to be five and one fourth Uh, three and a half so five and one fourth by three and a half we want this piece to be identical to that white piece that we just cut this acetate piece is what's going to make the magic happen so everybody when anytime you make one of these cards everybody wants to know how did you do that well i'm getting ready to show y'all the magic and how it happens so there's our piece of acetate I like to put it over top of my cardstock and make sure everything matches up perfectly. That looks pretty, pretty darn good. What do you think? Now the other thing that I like to do is make sure I don't have anything on my acetate. There's a little crumb of something. So I usually like to take a microfiber cloth and just wipe it. Make sure I have nothing on my surface. And wipe my cardstock off as well. Now this is where you are going to do your stamping and this is where your stamparatus is going to come into play. Uh, you have to decide what you want to make sure is that your this is the piece we cut out. So what you want to do is put it over top of this piece. The best thing to do is to slide this piece back in here bringing it all the way down to that bottom corner. And then I like to take my pencil, I mean a pencil that I erase really well, and I like to make a dot on each of the corners. And the reason I just do a dot, this will be enough to let me know that I'm staying within the perimeter, perimeters of my, my cutout. So you can see I've got my, my dots. That looks a little high, but I guess that's right. Yep, that's definitely right. Okay, so once I see what I've got going on here, I can better decide what I want, what I want to stamp here. So I had thought about doing the big butterfly because I think this would be so pretty and we could color this so many different colors. We could actually do him at an angle or we could do him straight on like that. I think I'm just gonna do him straight on like that. So let me grab my Stamparatus and we are not gonna need our foam mat because we are dealing with a, a cling stamp set. So, and what I mean by that, our red rubber stamps have foam already built in. But what you do want to do is make sure that you position your cardstock perfectly on a grid line and make note of what grid line you used. Like I'm gonna use this bold line here and the bold line across that way. And I'm gonna put a magnet down, making sure that I've got it perfect on that line. And this is the hardest part, is making sure you get everything nice and straight. Now I'm going to take my other magnet and put it right here. Just want to make sure that that piece is holding in there perfectly. Now I'm going to take this beautiful butterfly, and I'm going to make sure that it's falling within the perimeters of that score line or those little dots. So it's fitting there perfect and it's definitely fitting up there perfect. So that's my position for my butterfly. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up. I'm gonna grab my stamp set to put underneath here so when I ink it, I have a surface to lean against. So let me bring this a little bit this way so you can 
see everything that I'm doing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my memento. This is where you're going to need your memento ink because I'm going to use alcohol markers to color this because I want it to be vibrant. So I'm going to ink it up with this because I know that I can use my alcohol markers on my memento ink. Now what you're not going to do is use this ink on your acetate or your window sheet. It will not work on that. It will wipe off and you want to use something that will stay. I'm going to use my little tool to mash this down like so. That looks pretty but I'm going to ink it one more time because I want it nice and bright black. Where the black is black I want it to be a really pretty black. Like that. And do this one more time. I must have a kitty cat on my front porch. I have all of the neighborhood cats like to come and sit on my porch for some reason. And they set off my ring doorbell continuously. Um, I don't know why, but they really like to do that. All right, so now that I've got that done, I am going to take a little bit, no, let's use our chamois. I'm gonna use a Stampin' Chamois because I can clean this really good with this. This is just wet with water. And because the Memento is a water-based ink, anytime you're using a dye ink, it is a water-based ink that will clean up with water. You can see how pretty and clean that came. The stays on ink, on the other hand, is going to be a solvent ink, and we're going to need to use this special stamp cleaner for it. We'll get to that in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and take this out and lay that right there, and then I'm going to put this in, making sure that I'm lining it up on the same line that I lined up my acetate, I mean my white cardstock. So I'm going to put this, now I haven't moved my stamp, so my stamp is still in the right position. So all I have to do is make sure that this piece is positioned correctly here and here, and we're good. So this is where we're going to come in with our stays on ink. Now this ink stains your stamps that more with the photopolymer than your than your cling stamps but even with that you have to clean fast so we're going to stamp and we're going to clean okay there's my stays on it's a very rich black ink so i'm just doing a tap 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 and we're going to close that up bring it over and I'm going to do it with this, but I'm just going to use gentle pressure up and down. I'm not going to rub it. And there we go. I think I'm going to ink it one more time. Oops. One more time. Bring it over. Mash it. And up. That looks very pretty. Really quick, before I do anything else, I'm going to take this. This has a little dauber on it. And I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to daub cleaner all over the stamp. And you see real quick what it does. Then I'm going to grab my chamois. Maybe I'll yeah, grab my chamois. And we are going to wipe that off as best we can then I'm going to use my cleaning cloth and I'm going to grab my stampin mist and I'm going to clean it with that And 
And by doing that as quick as possible, I was able to salvage my stamp from getting stained. And like I said, if it was a photopolymer stamp, you would still get some staining because photopolymer stamps actually um, absorb the ink. The cling stamps, not so much. So I'm going to put that over there, make sure I wipe my stamp apparatus off really good. And now we can make sure I got everything closed up. Then we can come in and slide this off. Now I do not want to touch this. I want to let this air dry. So I'm going to lay it right up there on the edge of my computer. I'm going to go ahead and put my stamp apparatus up because I don't think we're going to need that anymore. Where while we're letting that dry, I am going to come in with some Stampin' Blends and we are going to go ahead and color in these little pieces. But before I do that, <laughs> there's always something else to do. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those little ink spots. You're going to want a really good eraser that's not going to smudge. And I found this eraser. Actually, I can't say I did. My husband, I sent him for pencils and erasers one day. And bless his heart, I told him, just get me a Bic um, mechanical pencil and the erasers and he came home with two or three different types of pencils and two or three different types of erasers and this is just a Walmart brand the pen gear um, and this little red rubber is excellent so I love that for my eraser all right I'm gonna go ahead and brush some of this debris off of my desk I don't want anything that's gonna cause me any problems here. So I want some bright colors because I want this, when we open it, I want this to pop. Uh, so I'm going to grab a dark Mango Melody. I want a dark Polish Pink. Nope, that's Magenta Madness. I want my Polish Pink, which is this one, I think. Polished pink. I want my dark Highland Heather. Hope that's fresh freesia. Maybe I want. Yeah, let's do the dark Highland Heather. And I want a nice rich blue. And let's see if this is the blue that I want. This is the light night of navy, and I think that will work. All right, so those are some really pretty bright colors, don't you think? They look very springy, and maybe a pumpkin pie. Let's throw some pumpkin pie in the mix, and I use the dark on it. So everything's the dark except the night of navy, and I grab the light on it. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to come in. I need to decide what color I want to start with. And I think I'm going to start with my Magenta Madness. And because I'm dealing with uh, little small spaces, let me zoom y'all in a little bit so you can watch me color. Um, since I'm dealing with small spaces, I'm going to use my bullet tip instead of the brush tip. These markers have two ends. You have a brush tip and also a um, bullet tip. So I'm going to use the bullet tip and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to go in on each side. Butterflies are pretty much mirror images. So if I do a yellow here, I'm going to do a yellow on that side. Same thing here. Although our butterfly is a little bit different on one side than he is the other, we still want to try to get as close as possible in our colors. So I went in with that color there. I'm going to do my Night of Navy next. Just right there. And here. You're not going to do a lot of blending on this butterfly because you've got very small spaces. So we're basically just going to be coloring. Then I want to come in with my Polish pink. I 
and you can see what beautiful colors this is giving. Now I'm going to come in with the Dark Highland Heather and we're going to do this little section right there and here. I might even come down this little area right there with some Holland Heather just to kind of bring that together. Just like that. Now I've got some orange. So I think I want to do my little pieces out here orange. So I'm going to go just in, you can literally just go up like that and fill that all in in like one sweep. Make it really easy and simple to do. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to swoop that color up and back down. Just making sure I get color all in there. Now I want to go back. I want that lighter. Let's do that pale. Um, Daffodil Delight and I'm going to come in on this edge with that pale yellow. I think that would be really pretty. Now we're going to come back up and I'm going to start with my Highland Heather and I might even grab my light Highland Heather. I think I want the light because I'm going to start right here and I'm going to fill that in. That's so pretty. Look how beautiful that color is. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. And then I'm going to come in with my orange. I think I want orange next. The pumpkin pie. And then I'm going to go in with that beautiful polished pink. And then we're going to do the Mango Melody. And I think we're going to do one more. Let's do the Dark Highland Heather. And then let's do a blue. The Knight of Navy, the light Knight of Navy. And let's grab the dark daffodil delight. And how pretty is that? Look how colorful our butterfly is already. So I'm going to come in now because I want to do these two spaces here. And we still got two spaces there. So whatever color we do here, we're going to do here. So I'm going to go in now with, I think I want to do this pink. And I want this pink to be in this larger space right here. I love that polished pink. I think it's so pretty. And you know, if you don't want to watch me do all this coloring, please feel free to fast forward because this is a recorded video. You can fast forward until you get to where I start putting the card together. I know some people find the coloring very relaxing and some people just don't care for it at all. So I'm going to go in now with my yellow. I want the yellow to kind of, and this is the Dark Daffodil Delight. 
So I'm going to go in here just to separate that purple and the pink. And then I'm going to come in with the blue again. And I want this section to be blue. And then this section to be blue. And th this butterfly is so easy to color, even with your Stampin' Blends, because you don't have to worry about anything but just coloring. You're basically just filling in some color. So I'm coming back now with that dark Daffodil Delight. And I just want to pull some of that up through here. And up through here. And I'm going to grab some orange because I think I want a little orange right in here. Pumpkin pie. It's our beautiful orange. And then I'm going to take that dark Highland Heather. And I want this section right in here to reflect that color. And you can color your butterfly whatever color you want him to be. I want to come back in where that looks like the eyes on the uh, the wings. I want those to be yellow. Isn't that pretty? Love that. Alright, I'm going to grab a little bit of my Knight of Navy and I'm going to color in right there and right here. Then I'm going to grab my polished pink. And I'm going in right beside that blue and the yellow. If you notice, I'm pulling it up through the black because I want that to have color. I don't want it just to lay flat. Now I'm going to grab my, I think I'm going to grab this dark Daffodil Delight again. And I'm going to pull up the color through here. And here. We're going to do some purple. I'm getting the dark Holland Heather. And then come over to this side and get the dark Holland Heather right here. And now I think I'm going to go back in with the blue. And a blue. And what if we finish him up with the pumpkin pie? Now, how colorful is our butterfly? I think he is gorgeous. What do you think? Look how pretty that turned out. Now I do want to do a little bit on the body. So I'm going to grab my... Nope, that's Evening Evergreen. I don't want Evening Evergreen. I want... A Dark Smoky Slate. And I'm going to come in right in here where it should be a little bit darker and just draw in and then around his body I'm just kind of outlining him a little bit just to give him a little bit more definition just to kind of accentuate the body a little bit more and I think that's perfecto 
So this piece should be dried now, our piece, our acetate piece. So what we want to do is lay it down over top of our piece. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? Now what we're going to do is make sure we've got everything lined up perfect. Then you're going to grab a clip. Now I like to use these small uh, binder clips, but you use a paper clip, whatever works for you. But you want to clip the right side, or the left side, sorry, the left side of this. Making sure that everything's lined up perfect. So let me zoom y'all back out. Whoops, wrong way. <laughs> I'm going to move all of my Stampin' Blends out of our way. We can put those away after the video. So what we need to do now is we need to put a little binder, a little circle here that will adhere these two pieces. I'm sorry, I'm out of frame. Right here we need to do a, like a little thumbprint. The best thing that works for that, if you have a one inch punch, grab yourself a one inch punch and a piece of black cardstock. And I'm just gonna grab a little scrap and I'm gonna punch out a one inch circle. And once you get that one inch circle punched, take it to your scoreboard or your trimmer and we're going to score it right in half. So I'm going to line it up at a half an inch and a half an inch. And I'm going to put my score blade right down on it and score it. Just that simple. Folding it in. When I say fold it in, whenever you score, you're pressing that score blade into the paper. You have a mountain on the back. Always fold into your mountain that will give you a nice even fold every time. So what you want to do now is you want to adhere that onto your acetate and this white cardstock. So what I like to do with this, I don't like to put glue on my acetate or my window sheets. So I'm going to use a piece of tape and I need my snips. I'm going to actually use this pair because they have Teflon and they won't get sticky. And I'm going to put a piece of tape on both sides of this little piece. Just that simple. Just cut off a little piece of tape and stick it down right there. Of course, I cannot find my take your pick, and y'all know I just had it. <laughs> oh, heavens to Betsy. Oh, here it is. You know what I did? I covered it up with all of my Stampin' Blends. So when I push them all over, let's see if we can zoom out a little bit more. All right. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this backer off just to reveal the tape and very strategically it looks like I've got something on my I did I had something on my acetate make sure that your acetate looks nice and clean and then what you want to do is you want to sit this down just kind of figure out your halfway point so it would be like right about there what i like to do is sit this down like that and then just bring my card with my acetate to it and sit it right into the middle fold it over just like that now that we've done that, we can take our clip off because now we have these two pieces are adhered together. So we are good to go. We can bring over our card. Now what I do want to do, which will make this work so much easier, I'm going to lay this on here. 
about where I know I'm going to center it up in between this piece so I have just a tiny bit showing top and bottom I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to draw where my thumb print is here and here just like that I'm going to do the same thing on the front of this I'm going to lay this down about where I think it's going to hit should be about there I'm going to do the same thing here I'm just drawing those lines to give me an idea of where I need to punch this out this is really an important step so go in look for your lines and you want to stamp kind of right between them stamp punch kind of right between them so I'm going to go right about there and then I'm going to do the same thing right here so I've got my lines there and there And we're going to hope everything lines up when it's all said and done. And that looks like that it's going to. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to come in looking for those lines. I'm going to go in far enough so I can see them. And that looks like right about there. That looks really good. So... Now, what causes our magic? We open up our card and we slide this piece on top of here, just like that. Okay, I do need to get rid of my pencil marks. Make sure before you adhere anything together, any pencil marks that you made are taken off and I probably got pencil marks on the front here I do get those off and again we are going to put this over top of that that over top of that this is going to go up about to here so see it's going to line up where our little finger is and then watch what happens when we pull this out black and white full color is that not super super neat the acetate sheet is what gives you that beautiful effect of the magic because you are sliding it your acetate is in front of this piece and your colored image is behind that piece and when you slide it out they change it's magic y'all don't you love that so the next thing we need to do is we need to put a bumper on this piece here so that we have a little bit of a something that's going to stop it and I'll show you what I'm talking about inside here Let me put it back together. Inside here, we are going to put stoppers here and here. That's going to keep that from coming out all the way. So let's bring that back up to here. Like that. And it needs to come down a hair. Yeah, about like that. So we need to put a bumper that's going to I'm going to use I'm going to use this back piece 
and we need a piece that is three and three fourths inch long. So scrap bin. I'm going to grab a piece of white. So this will work. So I'm going to cut a one inch strip off of this. And I'm going to put this right here. You know, really, I don't need that. I just need it to be a half an inch. So let's just cut a half an inch piece. I was thinking I needed to wrap it, but I don't. So we only need a half an inch by... Good rule of thumb is hold it against the piece that's already glued into your card and you want it to be the same width as that. So I'm going to cut that off right there. Don't you love that when there's no measuring involved? Actually if we need measurements on this it is Let's come down to here so I can see it. It is three and seven eighths. So three and seven eighths. I need to write that down so I'll have that. Da 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 da. Okay, half an inch by three and seven eighths. Okay, so now all we're going to do is on the back side of this, we're going to adhere this even with the back. So you want to just have a tiny little hangover on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up and I'm going to put tape right, uh, right down that side. And I'm going to just go ahead and use my tearing tape since that's what we've been using. That way I don't have to worry about putting down more adhesive or anybody feeling like they've got to use more than one type of adhesive. You can use this. Run it right across that edge just like that. Bring it down so you can see what I'm doing. And where's my little block? Tear it off right at the end. And then all we're going to do is set this down and burnish that down real good. Lift up my backer. And lay that down right about like that. Press it. Uh, one's up a little higher than the other, but you know what? That's okay. We can trim it. We can trim one off if we need to. So let's turn our card back around so that your thumb uh, nail thingy is right there. We're going to make sure this is sitting in the middle, right over top of that thumbnail. And we're going to put a little stamp and seal dimensional right about there that's going to stop that so I'm going to grab my little mini dimensionals and I'm going to put one right about here I think I want it right here so now when you pull this, I'm 
this should stop it so it doesn't pull out all the way. And that's what we wanted. Okay, so at this point we're ready to go ahead and put some adhesive on this side and glue this down. And for this I'm just going to use my regular glue. I'm going to go ahead and pull the, the backer off of that and so that it doesn't come off and get stuck because I don't want it to, you know what, I don't think it'll hurt if it sticks. Let's see if that'll still work. Oh yeah, that's even better. So it's okay if that sticks. Because once we seal this all up, it's not going to matter anyway. So I'm going to put glue on this side right here. So I'm going to run a line of glue and around the edges. And then all we're going to do is fold this piece over onto that piece and seal it down. Now we have our beautiful little card completely done. And the only thing that we have left to do is put a sentiment on it. I think what I want to do is I'm going to put a sentiment that's going to be popped up right here. And we're going to do that in black and white as well. And I think for it, I'm going to use my, my double oval punch. I think that'll work really pretty there. And we're going to do it all in black and white. So I'm going to grab a piece of white. Actually, I think this piece will work. All I'm going to do is punch out. I'll do it like this and I'll have a white piece for later if I need that. And then I'm going to grab a piece of black. And I just want the black one on this one. So what I want to do I want this to sit right like that, and I want to put my sentiment right here, and it's going to sit on top of that, and we're going to make sure that it doesn't sit on our acetate. We want it to glue down, but only on this corner. So I'm going to show you how to make sure that it, it only glues there. The first thing I want to do is find a sentiment that I want to use, and I'm thinking just something simple. Um, let's see what we have here. I feel all of these are going to be too big for this. Thank you would work. I'm always needing thank you cards, so I think I'll do thank you. So I'm going to grab my memento. that I can get it nice and straight. Very pretty. Now we can pop this up. Just give it a little, little whisper blow there so that I make sure it's dry before I turn it upside down. And still using some of my little cut aparts on here. So I'm just going to come in and go ahead and snip a lot of these off. So that's give it time enough to dry while I was doing the snipping. And 
And with using the black and white paper and the black and white sentiment along with the black and white butterfly, it looks like a theme on our card. So it will be a surprise to the recipient when they get it. And so how I'm going to make this work is I'm going to use some of my double-sided tape. And I'm going to tear a piece off and put it here. There we go. So I'm going to just burnish that down really good. And then pull that backer off of both pieces and then we're just going to sit this right here on that corner just like that so there is our cute little card that is a magic card and if you wanted to because there's really nowhere to write if you wanted to put a sentiment on it I would put a beautiful little die cut piece on the back and what I would do is I would use the Stitch So Sweetly and our largest one would fit and I would cut a piece of white let's see if this will work and it will so let's run that through our die cut machine and back here is where you could very easily stamp a sentiment or write a handwritten note, whichever you would prefer to do. And what a gorgeous, gorgeous card this makes. So I'm going to lay that down on there. I am going to use a couple of these just to kind of hold it because our cardstock is not that big. And this is what I'm talking about, about angling. Let me move some stuff so I can show you what I mean and zoom you out when I was telling you earlier we didn't have the room because our piece was big but anytime you're doing an, a piece that has a straight edge on it you want to turn it at an angle and I'll show you the difference remember how hard my machine popped earlier when I cut that piece I want you to see the difference very little popping cracking or anything it just takes all the stress off of your machine by doing it this way and it cuts beautifully every time Um, let's move this back out of our way. I think this piece right here on the back of this card for a place for a message. And like I said, you could stamp a message or you could, I'm going to put some temporary adhesive on that. Something that I can take off later. Um, because I just want something just to show you what how pretty this would look with something like this on it. And a beautiful place here to put a sentiment. And there is your beautiful thank you card. And it's magic, y'all. It's magic. How, how stinking cute is that? I love it. Love, love, love it. So much fun. And what grandchild, I mean, use some little characters. Uh, I've got some little mischievous mice that would be beautiful on this that would make a cute little card for a kid. The stellar birthday, that would be cute for a kid. Um, my granddaughter saw my cards this morning and she was like, oh, Gimme, I want my birthday card like that. Every time she sees a different card, it's Gimme, I want my birthday card like that. <laughs> Gotta love her. But here's the three different cards that I made. All of them are different, but all of them are beautiful in their own right. And I love the way they turned out. I hope that you did. I hope that you would try this. It really is not that hard. They are so much fun to make. Let me see if I can zoom y'all in. Get that all straightened up and zoom you in. Aren't they beautiful? And then when you pull them out, we have full color cards to play with 
to enjoy, to brag on. You know, we love our bragging rights, right? And look at that. All of these are so cute and so easy to do. I mean, yeah, there's some steps involved, but any of you can do this. So easy, so much fun, and nobody has to know the magic except us. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial. Sorry that it's gone on so long, but it was kind of an in-depth card. Go make one. You will love it. Thank you so much once again. God bless and keep you. And as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in heaven. He is worthy. Until we craft again, bye-bye.